September is here, summer is over, so that means it is time for us to resubscribe to Video Games Monthly. If you don't know what Video Games Monthly is, this is a monthly subscription service where you can get three, four, five, or ten retro video games delivered right to your door. And the cool thing about it, it's not a rental service, you get to keep them. Now, we subscribe to the basic three game a month pack, and we select games from like the Wii, the Wii U, the NES, the Super NES, you can even do imports such as the Super Famicom, the Famicom, the Japanese N64, and even the Japanese GameCube. So let's take a look what we got in this box, the condition of the games, and if we need to do any cleaning, let's get started. So the way I do the video games monthly unboxings, you see things just at the same time I do. I don't know what's inside of this box. The only thing that I've done is remove it from the USPS envelope. So we will reach inside here. Feel some bubble wrap, feel something. Okay, so we've got a video games monthly coaster. We have a win three games card. So basically on this, if you post your box to social media, you can get a chance to win three free games in your next box. Video games monthly chooses one random winner every month and a two up card. So like I mentioned, I pay for three games per month. The two up basically means instead of getting three games, there will be five in here. Sometimes this is a crap shoot. Sometimes this is just crap. What that means is the games that are in here, they're not worth a whole lot. So let's take a look at what we have here. So I feel a cartridge up top. Oh, Super Donkey Kong. So it'll flash the value and everything for you right on screen. This is what we got in the US as Donkey Kong Country now. I actually used to have a copy of this, and the nice thing about Video Games Monthly is they do have a website where you can go ahead and basically upload your um, your library and everything. I do have two and three for the Super Famicom. I don't have one. I actually gave this, well, my old copy of this, along with my Gamers Tech 16-bit uh, HD, or no, the Super HD 2, that what it, that's what it was. Give it to my brother who's going through cancer right now, so uh, and we will open this up and take a look at the pins in just a moment. Next, we have an NES game, Airwolf. Oh my God, it has been years since I've played this. Um, overall, cartridge is in decent shape. The label's in good shape and everything. Flash the value on screen here. I, I remember renting this, but I don't remember if I liked it or not. Lego Star Wars Wii uh, with a very rough looking case. Got a bunch of sticker snot and whatnot up, up there does have the manual which is good let's take a look at the disc got a smudge right there and a bunch of haste and crap along the center this is one of the things i've actually been very critical about video games monthly is i appreciate the fact this has clearly been through their resurfacing machine clear off the goop from the uh the spindle around the spinner spindle there Four is Gianna Sisters Twisted Dreams Director's Cut for the Wii U, and it's sealed. Um, if I remember right, this is a game that Jay over at Square Pegs got in his box a number of months ago, and I think this is supposed to be a really good game. I've never played it before, but it's sealed, so very cool. There's four out of our five. Our last game is also disc-based. Oh, hang on, there's something else in here. What is this? Hang on. What is this? Oh! We have a Koopa Parachupa uh, for a set of um, Crocs. Ellie Joel liked that. And I think that's it in our last game. Ooh, for the GameCube is a Crash Nitro card. No manual, does have the disc. This one doesn't look as snotted up, but it also looks like there's some scratches and whatnot here so we'll see in a second if this actually plays I'm, I'm a little concerned about those scratches um so we will check that out here and inside the box is there anything else there is nothing else besides bubble wrap so we'll hold on to this because this is a good shipping container for our 3d printed store but we are going to open up and check out the condition of the pens on super donkey kong country and airwolf all right, so we have a couple of tools here that we're going to utilize. We are going to start off on Super Doggy Kong Country. First things first is this is a 3.8 millimeter game bit uh, or security bit, it's also called. 
And then to claim the games, there are two options that we have here, both from 1UP Card. Uh, there is the mini and the standard size one. Uh, they are reusable. You can go ahead and uh, clean them in between uses if you wanted to. Basically, each one has a fluid side and then a dry side, so you can go ahead and insert it into your cartridges to clean them out. Um, now, the nice thing on here too, is as you can see, there's the larger and the smaller one. I like the smaller one for pretty much any cartridge. Uh, it'll work with, this is designed for like Game Boy, Game Boy Color, Game Boy Advance games. It also works great for N64 games and Super Famicom games. Whereas the standard size cartridge cleaner is designed for, you know, the NES, Super NES, so on and so on and so forth. Now, well, we will be using those to clean the cartridges. We also have the 1UP cleaning card fluid. It's isopropyl alcohol. Now, normally what I could do is just go ahead, insert the cleaner in here, top and bottom, buff it back and forth. But we're gonna actually open up the cartridge here so you can see the condition of the pins. Now, a lot of times, no fault of Video Games Monthly, uh, Japanese Famicom and Super Famicom games have a lot of like tobacco smut uh, within the cartridges just because smoking was so prevalent uh, in the 80s and 90s in Japan. That's just one of the things that that's just the case. So let's take a look at the condition of these pens. Oof. I'll give you a real close look. So and it's showing up a little bit more for me than on camera, but if you see all these black spots on the pens, that's basically dirt and carbon deposits on these pens that have been placed there over the years. Take a look at the other side. Wow, that's really, really filthy. So we're gonna take this and we're gonna do one-up cleaning card first, but I think we're gonna have to hit this with a little something extra called Bright Boy in just a moment. Uh, one other thing, looking at the battery here, this looks like the original battery. So we may eventually replace this for that. You basically unsolder these two tabs, pull it out and then drop a new one in its place. So let's start here with our one-up cleaning card. We're gonna open up the fluid and just put some on the fluid side. But again, this is just isopropyl alcohol. I don't think that this is gonna cut through the crap that's on here. I think we're gonna have to have to hit this with something called Bright Boy. That's not touching all that crap that's on there. Now, quite honestly, this would probably work in my system, but I don't wanna put that garbage in my system. So what we are going to do is we're going to use another solution here in just a moment. Yeah, that's, you can see those pins, how filthy those are. So this here is a solution called Bright Boy. I found this and, I mean, not to toot my own horn, I'm the one that's basically introduced this into the retro gaming community. We found this back, and I say we, really, it was the team out at Burien Toyota, of all places, in Burien, Washington. Uh, I used to race in an RC series called the Tamiya Championship Series, and Bright Boy was found by that, that group out there, and we used this to clean electric RC car motors. So what I'm going to do is, and also get just a um, Q-tip here. And these are actual Q-tip, branded Q-tips. Now, this little kit here, that bottle and the Q-tips came from a good friend of the channel, Thor, at the Midwest Gaming Classic. This year, he gave us this set. And as you can tell, I've yet to use them. So basically, all I'm going to do here is I'm going to pull off our cap here, the bright boy, grab our cartridge, and I'm just going to put a small bead right across the pens grab a q-tip and we're just going to rub this in now this is just applying i'm not actually doing any cleaning but you'll be shocked when i flip this around here look at that that's what we're keeping out of our games flip this side over here same thing just run a real light bead across it you don't need to use a ton of bright boy and again this is just applying so that's that side, that's that side. We're gonna let this kind of sit and break down that carbon buildup. And in the meantime, we're gonna take a look at Airwolf. One of the cool things about Airwolf, for me at least, is the fact that it starred Ernest Borgnine, who came to my hometown of Milwaukee, Wisconsin for many years and was a clown in the Great Circus Parade. So, um, yeah, just a, a neat connection for me in my hometown to uh, just a terrific character actor from the 80s and, and earlier. 
right, so let's take a look here at Airwolf. That looks much, much better. Those pins still show a few signs of dirt and whatnot. You know, up around here we're seeing a little bit. And overall, I would say for Airwolf here, all we're going to do is we're going to use the fluid side and that fluid side has not evaporated yet. So we're just gonna buff it out there. And then we're gonna buff out this side here. Now, one thing of note, if you see how I am holding the cartridge, I'm not putting my fingers anywhere near those pins. Basically what I'm doing is making sure that after I clean them, I'm not putting any you know, oils or anything, any fingerprints from my hands back onto those pins. So yeah, this cleaned up very, very well with just a one-up cleaning card. Absolutely love using these. They make cleaning games so much easier. And the nice thing on this versus just a Q-tip, because I know a lot of people just say use isopropyl alcohol and a Q-tip, a Q-tip can actually leave fuzz and fibers behind where this is more of a lint-free type material, so you don't necessarily have to worry about that. So we'll bring in our back here. So one final tip here is you see me put the screws in the back of this and then into the Super Donkey Kong. Before you tighten down, unscrew slightly. You'll hear it kind of click and take a set before you screw it back into place. Basically what that ensures is that you are utilizing the same threads that are already cut into that plastic and that you are not cutting new threads. Um, that's one of those things that, you know, with these games being this, you know, you see the copyright here of 1985, you're looking at 40 years old, that's some old plastic that you don't want to strip out. Or maybe you do, maybe you're sick and twisted, I don't know. I would also say too, as we're putting this back together, I'm getting ready to head to Layton, Utah for the Utah Retro Game Swap that's happening this weekend, September the 9th. Um, it never hurts to have a set of these tools with you when you go to game conventions, so that way you can open games up, take a look at them, verify the authenticity, and check out the condition of the pens. But Airwolf overall in great shape. Now let's finish our cleaning here on Super Donkey Kong. So again, here was the, the application side. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use the other side, clear off the cleaner. Yeesh, that's what we're keeping out of our system right there. Now, while I did open both cartridges up, to do basic cleaning, you don't have to. You can leave them in the case. It's one of the great things about the one of cleaning cards too, is they are designed to fit in between the pins and the shell. So look at that, that's filthy. Again, that's what we are keeping out of our system. And on the back side here. Now I know our good buddy, John Riggs, he holds by the side. Um, I generally do the pins. I think the reason he doesn't is because he doesn't like getting jabbed by the backside of the pins, and I don't blame him. We are actually going to grab a clean Q-tip here, too. Just a light little pass. You can already see the, the crud being picked up there. Now, this does remove... Ooh, look at that blackness. Uh, remove just ever so little bit of material from the pins. Um but it's one of those that I've never had a game not work because of Bright Boy. Now, one of the reasons I know a lot of people say, hey, why don't you use, we'll use the other side here, why don't you use Brasso? Why I went to Bright Boy over Brasso. So, like I mentioned, we found this testing RC car motors. They're dyno meters for those motors. We found that Bright Boy not only cleaned everything more completely, it flushed out of the motors, more completely and it actually did not inhibit current flow if anything it increased efficiency and current flow so there's that so that's what we ended up getting out of that one now i'm going to go back through again with our one up cleaning card just going to put a little bit more fluid on here and the reason why i'm doing this is unlike brasso um bright boy doesn't leave that residue behind that that white chalky residue you can still get some left behind though. So this is just making sure if there's anything left behind that you're getting all of it off of the cartridge. So you're basically cleaning after you're cleaning. It's like preparing before you prepare. Name the movie, anyone. Preparing, you're always preparing, just go. You didn't know that that was Spaceballs. 
I'm a little disappointed. The other thing, the actor was Tim Russ. We ain't found bleep. That was Tim Russ, a.k.a. Lieutenant Commander Tuvok on Star Trek Voyager. So we are going to put the cartridge back in. I know one thing too, a lot of people, what if I forget which way the cartridge, the pins go, if they go up or down? I'm going to just show you this real quick. It can only go back in in one direction. And one direction is a terrible band. Slide our pins back in there. Just like with Airwolf, we'll get the screw lined up. Back it up. There, it fell into place. Tighten it back down. Same with that screw there. We are going to unscrew. Check it set. Tighten it back down. And that is we won a clean copy of Super Donkey Kong. Let's take a look at our total value and see what we think. So how did Video Games Monthly do for us this month? Well, one of the things that I do is I use an app called Game Eye on my phone. Absolutely love it to let me know not only what I have in my collection, but what it's worth. So Airwolf Loose, we're looking at $8. Nitro or uh, Crash Nitro Kart playing behind me. Just did play. That is $11. Loose. $14 box and manual. I'm going to rate this at about $12 roughly since there is no manual. Gianna Sisters, uh, Twisted Dreams, new, $14. Lego Star Wars is $8 in this condition. Uh, and then for me, the one that really has the most like sentimental value is Super Donkey Kong at $9. We're about just a little bit over $50 in our total value here. On a $35 spend, one thing that shocked me when I resubscribed they've increased their shipping prices i understand prices have gone up everywhere it was kind of a steep increase so uh we did do a little bit better than our investment within about five to eight dollars of where we're at and that's what i like to see for me really the two winners out of this has to be super donkey kong and really airwolf although gianna sisters i've never played jay speaks highly of it i want to check that out and even uh, Crash Nitro Kart, any of these games really, this is this is not a bad box um, as far as just the overall type of game that I would like to play. There, These are games that if I had the opportunity, I would throw in and just sit down and play, and that's what I like to see. And one of the cool things that Video Games Monthly can do for you as well is if you give them a list and let them know, hey, I'm looking for this, 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 they'll kind of keep an eye out for you. And on the flip side, I don't want this, I don't want this, I don't want this. So, for example, I don't like RPGs at all. I hate RPGs. I hate turn-based RPGs. Don't want them. Don't need them. Want nothing to do with them. I've let them know that. Sometimes one still slips through the cracks, but it's one of those things they try to do right by you the best that they can. I know some people out there, they don't want sports games. Tom, do your nerd. Not a sports game fan. So they do their best to curate their list and keep that out of his collection. Um, yeah, Super Donkey Kong is special for me just because, like I mentioned during the cleaning and everything, the fact that this is one of the games I gave my brother when his cancer came back in 2018. He's fighting it again, and it's not looking good. So um, I'd rather have my brother than the copy of this game, but it's one of those things that Anytime I look at this, I'm going to think of my brother Scott. So uh, we have done a number of these unboxings and walked you through how to clean the games, how to check them out, things like that. If you want to check out some of the other videos that we have, I've done a whole playlist showing our video games monthly unboxings, showing you the value and everything. I'll have that for you right here. You can go through, check it out. I'm sure you'll see a lot of good, some bad, and a few things kind of ugly. Maybe even the host.